Good morning. How are you doing, lovely people, on this um, sunny, dare I say, spring day? <laughs> um, I hope you're, hope you're doing well. Uh, this is your Yoga Solutions Live on Tuesday the 3rd of March 2020. Yes, so here we are. I've had. Uh, I'm still officially on retreat in that um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not taking any bookings this week. Uh, but uh, today, um, I, could, I couldn't leave my yoga solutions um, for two weeks in a row. That seemed too long. And, uh, and my online classes, I couldn't leave those for two weeks either. So, so uh, today I'm having a little hiatus from my retreat to do these. Um, so... Yes, I, 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 I love sharing my stuff. It's, it's kind of part of what um, makes me happy. So to leave it out of a uh, retreat time, I don't know. It, it was good having a week off, but um, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm here this week. Um, so uh, let, let's see, let's see what questions have I got. Um, yes, well, I've got one here from Peter uh, in the Isle of Wight. Hi, P hi, Peter. Um, what does he say? I, I like your talking. Oh, good. Uh, as much as you're doing, and you always talk a bit. Yes, I do. Uh, I ha you have actually revealed a lot about yourself. Yes. That's, uh, yeah, I do that as well. <laughs> it's, good. It's, it's kind of part of my journey, I think. It's, um, you know, my, my whole yoga process has been about becoming myself and in order to become myself I need to feel free to express who I am and then those parts of myself that I'm uncomfortable with and I notice I'm uncomfortable with um, I get to notice so uh, I then get a chance to look, look at myself and change so it's part of my um, evolutionary process so yes I do probably overshare but <laughs> there you go um, uh, anyway, what's he saying? Uh, I'm still struggling, struggling to change. Okay, uh, what was my trigger? Feel free to ignore if that's too personal. But I'm always trying to change, and always think there will be, should be a magic switch. <laughs> Just want you to tell me what it is. Okay, uh, it's not a stupid question, Pete, uh, Peter. It's um, I actually think this is what most of us are doing our yoga for. I, th I think there's a, if you're drawn to yoga, uh, uh, may maybe a little less these days because it's a bit more sort of, it's a bit broader availability. And it's, it's thought of as a stretching exercise that you do after your gym, you know. Um, so per perhaps not for everyone, but um, I've always thought that if you're drawn to yoga, it's because there's a hankering for some uh, access to something deeper. Uh, which I, I think is a natural part of being a human. Uh, otherwise, there wouldn't be religion and, and other things, you know, belief systems. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think if you're, if you're looking for change, being, uh, being drawn to yoga is one of the potential signs that that's the case. And um, yes, what's the trigger? I th oh, well, I can tell you what the trigger isn't. I can tell. I, I can. I can say what will keep things from changing, and that is doing things the same way that you've always done them. Because uh, the the way the way I see it, body and mind are already one. They're already expressing the same thing. Um, and, uh, and I'm talking about from my personal experience. When I came to yoga as an adult uh, nearly 30 years ago now, I was in a lot of physical pain. And I thought it was my body telling, well, I thought it was my body giving me trouble. And I was innocent inside of that, um, being attacked by the body. And it, it wasn't true at all. Uh, what I was experiencing physically was my body telling me how I was feeling. 
and how I was feeling was out of sorts with the world and, and not in connection to who I am on a, on a real level. It was all about, uh, I, I was trying to live a life that would externally validate some version of myself that I thought would be approved of. And my body was telling me about it. I was in physical pain. Uh, I, th like I said, I thought it was um, a problem with my body. And, uh, and it wasn't helped by the fact that um, most chiropractors and osteopaths and doctors and all the rest of it, physiotherapists, diagnosed me as being stiff and out of whack. And, and um, you know, it was, all, it was all talking about the body being at fault. And it wasn't until um, I worked with uh, Pete Blackby as an osteopath, uh, who, who is also a yoga teacher, of course, um, that uh, I got a different, I, st I started to move into a different perspective. I mean, osteopathy is still coming from a kind of mechanic, body mechanics kind of idea of things. But he did say to me um, that the, the reason my body's in pain <laughs> was because I, I hold myself together in a, in a complicated way, in a way that hurts. Uh, and um, through that, I, I sort of noticed the, the connection between my actions and my experience. Anyway, um, long story short, through yoga, I discovered that it was the other way around. It wasn't the body that was giving me trouble. It was my way of thinking, my way of um, feeling about life and everything around me that was causing me to contract and hold and, and be tense in, in different ways. And all of, those, all of those things were sourced in my thinking. The wonderful thing about physical yoga practice is that, um, well for me, but it, it wasn't about controlling the body, it was about uncovering the truth of the body and there was this direct barometer for, for how my thinking was going that was, that was my body talking to me. So if, and, and it could be simplified, it could be objectified to some degree in that if I have a knee problem, a knee pain, then it's to do with my relationships to my knee. It's not my knee's fault. Uh, and, and, and from this evolved this sort of idea of relationship. So um, if I refined the quality of my actions, the, the quality of my touch, um, so that it didn't cause problems in the knee from the ground up, and if I, if I refined my relationship to space from the thigh up, um, or from the head down, so that it didn't give undue weight to the knee as I was taking, as I was supporting myself, then that relationship, that change in relationship, would give me a different experience of knee. Um, and 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 it's a, it was a, it was nice and simple because it was it was kind of structural, uh, and the and the evidence was there the moment that I ceased being in conflict with myself at the knee, the knee ceased giving me pain. So, so I have this um, direct um, relationship to my body. I developed this direct relationship to my body where I was turning toward to the, the voice of my body to get answers about uh, the quality of my relationships to things and between things. And somewhere along the line, somewhere within that process of working through the body and seeing it, each part of it, as relationships between other things, um, moreover, when I, when I got into this enviro-somatic relationship, um, idea of how to guide practice, as in relating to how I support myself through contact and how I engage with space to find what is supposed to happen in the middle, um, through this process, um, I got clearer and clearer that the experience that I am having within my body, the somatic part, is a direct 
relationship of how I am engaging with life around me. And it didn't necessarily make everything flow hunky-dory instantly, but it did shift my position to life from life is happening to me my, uh, to I am happening to life, as in it is my, I, I, you know, anything that goes on around me that is uncomfortable, it's, it's going on, it's going on, but within that, I, there is a part, there, I have a part in it. Um, my part of what's going on um, is something that I can influence. So it's an it became an empowering thing in life itself. And I started to measure what's happening in life around me in the same terms that I was measuring what was happening within my body in a kind of objective way in this, there is a relationship going on here that I have part of. Um, and if I can in influence my part of it to make the thing, the, the, the thing that I'm doing um, less of a conflicting relationship to the experience that I'm having, then I can influence my experience. So when the switch went, uh, the question was when, you know, what, what's the switch? And um, <laughs> the, I don't know. I don't know what the switch was. It, it happened. Uh, it, it's happening still. It's not, it's not like it happened and then I'm, I'm sorted. I still flip back every now and again when I'm in stress and other things. Or, or you know, when life's not quite going as, <laughs> as I would like it. I still flip back into that kind of removed relationship to things. But um, as a way of being in my body and being in life, I think perhaps that's the switch, is, is when, I could, when I made the direct relevance between uh, this process of listening to the true nature of the body and how, I, you know, uh, how to measure my actions through that um, to applying that to life itself, as in noticing my experience and then refining my part of it, uh, rather than trying to force external environment to change to me. I, I relate to the environment differently. Um, and, and so there's a, there's a shift of perspective that happened in there somewhere, and along with it came, comes um, a certain degree of humility, uh, a lot of gratitude when you realize how, how random everything is really and uh, how much we rely on, the, on this sort of vast pattern of experience to support us and how magical, how, you know, how grateful uh, gratitude comes with that because you, um, I don't know, you realize the magnificence of the whole thing. And, and again, it's, it's moments, it's moments. And, and like, like in my physical practice, uh, a large proportion of the time I'm looking for it, I'm looking for practice, I'm looking for the answers. I'm, I'm doing this bit, I'm doing that bit, until there, there are these moments when it's equal. There's a mo there are moments when the foot touches the ground, touching the ground is equal to my uh, relationship to space, so that the knee has nothing to do but be in space. Um, there are moments when it's, when it's equal, where I don't have to decide whether it's right or wrong, because it is. It just is, and it, f and it, and it feels... Um, it's recognisable, and I, I, know you've, I know you've been there yourself, you know you get there yourself regularly. It's f and, and it's those, those moments that I consider to be the yoga. That, it's all yoga, as in we are always at, you know, mind and body are always doing the same thing. But what happens is when, when you get that integration with the environment, or when you get that moment of integration between all things, when everything is about equal, touch, space, and what's happening in the middle, when you get to that place, it's, I think it's universally recognisable. I, I see it so regularly when I when I work with people. It's it's a moment of stillness. It's a, mo a moment when it's not that we have stopped thinking, 
or stopped being, stopped doing anything really. It's just that there, there is a moment of total presence to what is, total absorption in, in experience in all directions, without, without the interfering complication of additional analysis of the situation. It's just direct, full immersion presence to what is. And in those moments, there, there are no questions. It could, there's no, it's not that all questions are answered even. It's just there are no questions. There's no need for them. There is no past. There is no future. There is only this moment and it's such an expanded feeling um, I, I don't think it requires any other explanation really it's not that it, you know I, I would love to live in that feeling um, I'm not sure how possible it is but I presume uh, those that uh, say that they are enlightened do so <laughs> maybe I don't know um, well, all I know is that I've got this amazing body that can tell me when I'm there or it, it can give me clues as to as, a, as to how about how to go about getting there, because my body will tell me when I've got it right. I don't have to keep trying to work it out. I just keep um, my attentions on some very basic things. This envirosomatic relationship, the, the 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 relationship between how I feel in my body and what I'm engaging with in the environment around me. And there's a few clues that I've noticed over the years, like make everything you're feeling is a relationship, um, make everything you're doing about equal. Um, what else? Uh, that's about it. You, get, you have to be able to breathe what you're doing, as well as let the breath go into what you're doing. And there's a rhythm to it. You know, the, uh, my conditions, which, you're, which um, you say is the uh, basis of the physical work. And it, I think it, it also creates a shape for um, guidance, um, you know, it gives you boundaries and shape, the shape for, for guidance in, in life as well, because, you know, if you're, if you're in a life situation where there is conflict, first of all, you have to uh, find a way of taking out that conflict. You have to get both parts of the relationship to relax somehow, to turn up, become quiet and present, listening from the heart. That's, that's, the first, that's the first part, to let go of unnecessary, unnecessary um, conflict, to recognize the situation as a relationship and to let it go. The next part is to relate, to work out how to use the relationship to what's going on for support as opposed to retract from it or push against it, which is, a more, is kind of a relationship to space. And then the third part of this event in life that is um, apparently causing conflict is having softened the conflict in the first place, having related differently to uh, find support from that relationship, from the thing that's going on around you, um, then the internalized experience becomes clearer. And uh, so you've, you move into the center of things and you start talking relating to the situation from a centered place rather than you pushing out into it or it pushing against you. It's, it's a two-way relationship. That's the third condition. The fourth is the, uh, the, the practice of it, the recognizing of the rhythms of it, the, the following of that pace and the, the, the skill of riding the wave. You know. Then the fifth and sixth is learning how to lean into the relationship as you breathe and then surrender into your back into your center as you continue to lean into it and trust it. And then, like, then all is well. <laughs> so it, it's uh, my, my, the, the physical stuff, the, the guidance that um, I've offered you on the, the course um, to, um, that helps you work out the body becomes guidance for life itself. Um, I, I daren't, daren't put myself in the role of being a life coach because I'm busy uh, coaching my own life. But I use the same principles. I use this um, noticing direct presence to what is and the body and, uh, and the feelings in my body, the responses in my body to measure what's going on around me and, uh, and my relationships to it. So. 
So uh, well, well, I'm glad you enjoyed talking, my talking, Peter. Um, uh, I'm not sure everyone else, <laughs> don't know if anyone else does, uh, but I hope that that was interesting for you. Uh, I have 10 minutes. Um, I would quite like to do some yoga. So let's, um, let's see what I feel like doing for 10 minutes. Um, I think probably, uh, if, if I've got 10 minutes, and uh, before I have to do something and I want to practice, I usually do a reclining leg extension. Because it kind of, either that or a dog pose or something, but I feel like we're reclining leg extension in this moment. So if you want to join me, this would be how I would do it. Uh, if I'm doing the right leg, I would roll over to the left hand side with the, uh, uh, both legs bent to start with. And I would take hold of the right foot. And the first thing to do is to take out um, conflict. So, so I'm going to revise what I was talking about. So, you know, uh, the idea of leg stretch, as soon as you start stretching your leg, you're in trouble. What you need to do is relax. You need to relax. You need to feel supported and relax back into yourself. And the way I'm ho hooking over this foot helps me do that where I rest back into my hip. If I was doing the other side, you'll see it a bit better, perhaps. So from the way I'm, I'm resting away from the leg that I'm holding, gives me space. And as I rest back from my holding, that sort of allows the bones to settle in their socket, in, the, in their joints. Um, then part two is, uh, well, ha having relaxed, it's kind of the starting point, I, I engage with my touch. So the touch is the, the ground underneath me, but also the touch between the foot and the hand. So the foot touching the hand begins the movement where, the, where you start to move in the direction of the toes a little. So that's part two. So it's up the middle, basically. And uh, if you want to make this a rhythmic practice, you engage with the earth, release the breath, and travel up the middle with the big toe. I'll swap sides so you can see it from a different angle. So I relax back into myself so there's no conflict around the joints, particularly the hips. Um, I, I give to the ground, but moreover, I use the ground with the release of the breath to move in space through the big toe. And uh, the, the foot touching the hand is important. If I don't do that, I, I just have a leg to pull which isn't the same thing. So up the middle. Next part is the space. So from the ground, I mean the space either side of me. So there's a widening feeling. It's not, it's not sort of pulling wide, it's widening into space. And that's more to do with your little toe side of things. So out to the side, up the middle, out to the side. And then the last part, um, is what comes back from that. So, so I've got the earth underneath me. I've got a relationship to space up here through the hand and the foot. The last part is how to you know what happens on the inside. How do I feel supported and spacious from those things? And the answer is away from me, as in from this contact, from the support, I want to find what happens in the other direction, away from it away from it. Yeah, so the, the hand and foot kind of try and move away from each other to, to see what I get from my foot and to see what I get from my hand. To see what the arm gets from being supported by the foot, dragging back from it. To see what the leg gets from, dra from dragging back from the fingers. And that way you get to open up the leg into the space and you, and you meet the space behind you. The result is this sort of sense of support back through you, through your bones, into, into your spine. So, up the middle, out to the side, and away from you. Um, and it's, it's that part, that coming back together thing, that I consider to be the beginning of the yoga, really. Because we're not, we're not externally doing stuff to the body. It's a return from touch and from space to the central being, which I feel to be between the solar plexus and the heart. 
it's, it's like the solar plexus is more your kind of uh, visceral body, your, your physical body. The heart is more to do with um, your relationship to the world as a person, perhaps. And between those things, that, that's where we're sort of coming back towards um, in our practice with Earth and space. It's, it's where we head towards from our outward journey into the Earth, from our outward journey into space. The result needs to be back into ourselves. The result needs to be back into ourselves so that we start to relate from the centre of our being to the Earth and to space. And that's when, for me, when the yoga begins. So up the middle, with a sort of sense of relaxation back into myself. Up the middle, out to the side using a touch, and then away from you to find your centre. Up the middle, out to the side, and away from you. I got up terribly then. Yeah. Never mind. Such is life. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. It was just five minute practice. Um, hope hope you did. Um, and I hope you didn't mind all the all the chat. <laughs> so just a little something about what's going on now. Uh, this month, including today, I am offering drop-ins on my online classes. I, I do I do all my online things on Tuesdays, but for my courses. Um, so it's it it starts today. Uh, there's a class in about half an hour, eleven thirty. It's an hour one hour class, interactive, and there's one in the evening at six thirty. And uh, just for this month, I'm offering half price drop-ins, um, which works out at uh, ten pounds a class. So if if you and you can book it directly on the website now, uh, if you if you go to the Aquaviva website and click book online, um, a thing will pop up and you've got the choice of uh, which class to to join. So you can you can join for a drop in for the morning, a drop in for the evening class, or if you want to um, try out the gold membership, which works out as about the same price as the same as half price but you get access to both classes so it's more like quarter price um, <clears throat> if you if you want to do two classes a day they're, they're, they're an hour long and um, I, I really I limit the number of people that can join because there's a certain I have a limit to the number of people I can see and respond to on the screen so it's limited num places and uh, once places have gone they're gone uh, but yeah, for this month, you can, uh, if you use the code, uh, the coupon code, um, spring start, spring, uh, capital letters, all capital letters, uh, spring dash start, um, then that will give you the class for half price. It's, it, they're listed at £20 a go drop in, or it's 49 95 a month if you want to sign up for a regular support and um, if, if you do the gold membership thing you can come to either or um, e either the morning class or the evening class or both if you choose so there's a bit more flexibility uh, that's for this month uh, I'm offering the drop-in thing what else I have a workshop coming up in Twickenham end of March other than that I'm in uh, Cyprus pre presuming everything <laughs> is okay uh, there's a long weekend at the end of May I have other things going on I'm, 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 I'm joining forces with Tuesday McNeil to run a British Wheel uh, foundation course um, yeah, that starts in June and there's a, a link for that on my website and oh yes, I'm coming up to London. Uh, I, I come up every month, actually. Uh, there's um, once a month I come to London Bridge at a student's flat. Uh, Nancy, she's uh, very kindly lets me use her flat once a month, so I can do one to ones there. There's a few spots, uh, a couple of spots left for for March the 18th. Um, there's one, yes, there's a Wednesday once every month. Other time, the rest of the time you can um, book me directly 
online or in Hove, come see me in, in this lovely space here. And um, yes, you can do that's all on that same book online page. There's another link book one to one with Mark. Um, what else? That's, that's about it, really. I'm sure there's other, I feel like there's other things. But uh, yes, uh, if you're interested, then go on the website and you'll find out. Uh, oh, yes, uh, I'll, I'll be putting together um, the next. Uh, next level online course uh, pretty soon. We've done haptic intelligence, proprioceptive intelligence. The third one is going to be somatic intelligence. It's, it's kind of, um, it's going to be about all the main relationships between main structures of the body. And uh, it's, so it's going to be quite involved. It's, so, so this one will be a 12 week course. and. Um, a bit more expensive than the other ones, of course, because it's twice as much time. I might, I might spread it out over, um, over a few months, so that there's um, well more than a few months, so that there's uh, ample time for absorption and integration in between. So we have the, have the odd week off. Okay, so I'll let you know about that when that comes. If you're interested, drop me a line because there'll be limited places for that too. Uh, otherwise, feel free to try drop in. Um, weekly class they're kind of informal and it's you know I start every class with what would you like and um, usually there's someone that has something going on that's interesting enough for everyone for us to uh, focus the class on and um, yes pe people tend to that do it generally find it um, very supportive okay that that'll do from me uh, I'm Mark J Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga signing off uh, until same time same place next week lots of love to you all Here we go. Bye now. <laughs>